In this video, let's have a look at the simple kit, the components we can work with to build our synthesizer, and the connection to the microcontroller we'll be programming to design our instrument. Before we get into soldering any components, um, let's have a look at what we actually have here. This is a jack socket. This is what we would connect our mono cable to. We also have potentiometers that we can control our synth with and switches. And the switches come in two versions. One is an on-off switch, which is like this. And one is an on-off-on. On. So we have three positions here. And when I say on-off-on, on, it doesn't necessarily mean that in the center it's completely off. It just means that we can program it to do three logic tasks rather than only two with the on-off switch. So with that being said, I would want to show you quickly how the board is constructed internally, because this will really help you understand how and why this board is designed in the way it's designed. You see, this whole project started with me trying to figure out how to create educational programs that will um, that could spread around the world. So I could work with more uh, students, more musicians and artists and teach people how to build synthesizers, which I find very rewarding. And by creating a structure, so as a designer, when you're building systems, these systems can improve on the experience, the learning experience for someone so they're able to get started with something that they might want to start with, but they have no idea where to start. And from my experience, learning DIY electronics and programming and synthesis can be quite overwhelming because it can be quite technical. So this board, the whole goal of it is to speed up the process, make it much more fun and engaging, and really have something in your hands that really feels like an instrument much, much faster than what you would have if you would learn everything from scratch and need to find all the components on your own. Now, let's have a look at how the board is actually constructed or structured. What we see here is 80 footprints. These are 80 modular footprints. They're identical to one another. So we can have a look, for example, here, this is number 53. And this is number 63. Um, they're basically the same thing. It's this structure. Now, the structure is connected internally. So 63 here is connected internally into pad 63 here. Pad 63 here can be then connected with a wire. So say that I would take a wire here and I would connect it from 63 oh, into the row below like that. So let's say 32 here. When I make this connection, 32 is actually connected to the microcontroller we're placing here. So we can see here numbers, this is 32. 32 here and 32 here are connected with trace of copper inside of the board. This allows us to design an interface where all the wires are at the bottom and all the components are at the top. So this really feels like a musical instrument I can play, even though it doesn't really have a case yet. Um, just to show you, let's run a little continuity test to see what is connected to what. So we have now OL, this is open line. And now let's say that I probe on here, this is the center pin of pad 63, and I would touch here, and I get 0 0.3, 0 0.2 uh, resistance ohms, uh, which means that there is a connection between these two. Somewhere here in the center, there is a little thin wire or a little thin trace of copper that goes all the way to here. It does not go to here, and it does not go to here, because this could create some problems. Now, this pin here is connected to the center pin of the potentiometer. So if I would connect my potentiometer here in the center, 
Now, 63 is going inside into my potentiometer. And when I change the value of this potentiometer, it changes this value, sends it to the microcontroller. So then we could actually define this as our frequency, the oscillator frequency, for example. And we could actually control something with this. Now we also see that we have two other legs here and potentiometers should always have three legs that are connected to the circuit. There are additional two legs here, but we'll talk about them in a second. You can see here on the right side, there is a ground connection and here there is a VCC connection, volt. Uh, this is now gonna be 3.3 volts. Volts are basically coming, the circuit, the, the electrons, if you wanna go um, physics on this, which we won't, but like just to give you an indication of, of, of what's going on, when we have a microcontroller, it is connected through USB to our computer. And the electrons, the current of electrons is going into the microcontroller and then through these pins to our circuit. So when we have our microcontroller connected here, and then we have a wire connected from here to here, we are basically sending the electrons somehow, either from here to here or from there to there, but there's basically a circulation of, um, of electrons inside and we could work with them sort of like a playground for electrons that they have to go through all these challenges that we give them and if we play our cards right with these electrons we can actually get the sound we want this is a very weird analogy uh, i can imagine for many of you but bear with me we have a connection between this leg to this leg which we can then connect with a wire to here what's happening with a switch so say that i would connect a switch this switch is connected in the center of the footprint and it is actually connected to the same pin that the potentiometer is connected to internally the switch is actually connected on these three pads and the bottom pad you can even see that there is a bit of a like an, an arrow going to here and to here so this is connected to this internally and it's also connected to this and this is what allows us to not only put here a potentiometer but also to put here a switch or to put a socket if we would connect a socket it would go in where is it uh, like this 45 degrees into into the board, into the footprint. And now this pin, so just like we said, we have this pin, this pin, and this pin are internally connected, just like the arrow shows. So this pin over here, this one, is the one that's connected to our socket. And the rest is connected to ground. With a switch, we put it in the center. This one is the active pin that we interact with, just like the potentiometer. And this one in the center is our ground. It's always a reference to the ground. And one last thing that we should be aware of is that ground and VCC on every microcontroller, they can be in different pins. So, for example, here we have on 48 ground and on 29 we have uh, the VCC and also on 20 we have another ground and we need to connect all three of them. But then when we look at something like the Arduino Nano here has ground and VCC pins in different positions, in different pins. So they won't be, first of all, it's not even the same uh, length. Uh, so you don't really have the amount of pins here. but just trying to say that every uh, microcontroller has its own pin structure and although this would fit here and you could work with it the vcc and ground connections are going to be different and how do we remedy this we simply design the board in such a way that's going to make it platform agnostic vcc and ground are connected to these points here and also to these points here it's also connected to the S and the P. So 
like the simple logo is actually this is VCC and this is ground connections. So let's look at the computer and review the pinout diagram from the manual of the simple kit. And we can see here that we have pin uh, DGND. This is digital ground 48. We have here analog ground AGND 20. Then we have 3V3, which is as saying 3.3 volts, which is VCC on 29. And we have to connect all these three to make sure that our daisy is connected to the simple board. So to conclude, we have three components, one, two, and three, and we can connect them on our board on 80 different footprints. And we have our microcontroller that's going to be placed here. And then the connection to each of these pins can be done by connecting a wire between these pads to these pads. Let's prepare our daisy seed and put some pins on it.